Hi guys, I'm Smita and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things AI and machine learning related. Today we are going to be covering day 9 of 100 days of machine learning. If you guys are new to this channel and you don't know what 100 days of machine learning is, check out the video for day 0 which will be in the description box below and definitely subscribe so you guys will be notified whenever I post. Without any further ado, let's get started with day 9. If you guys recall in the previous video on day 8, we talked about linear regression and I showed you guys exactly how to code your own linear regression model uh, and we used that on a data set about STEM salaries. But today we are going to be looking at polynomial regression. So let's get into it. Let's have a slight recap before, before we start with polynomial regression. In the previous video, we were looking at linear regression and our equation for our linear regression looked like this, where y is equal to total yearly compensation, and that is what we were trying to predict, that is our outcome, and our, we had three features, x1, x2, and x3. x1 was years of experience, x2 was years at company, and x3 was base salary. So these are our three features, and y is our label, which we are trying to predict. And our equation, our linear regression equation looked like this. y hat, which is our predicted value, predicted y value, is equals to w1x1 plus w2x2 plus w3x3 plus b, which is the bias. Now, in polynomial regression, it is going to be slightly different. If you think about it, linear regression is a form of polynomial regression where the power is just 1. But in polynomial regression, we can have multiple powers. So, for example, let's take a look at pol uh, polynomial regression with a power of 2. So, in a polynomial regression with a power of 2, this is what we are going to have. We're going to have x1 and x1 square, x2 and x2 square, and x3 and x3 square plus b. So when it comes to polynomial regression with power of 3, we will be taking into account x1, x1 squared, x1 cubed, x2, x2 squared, and x2 cubed, x3, x3 squared, and x3 cubed. So I think you guys understand the drift of how polynomial regression works. So we can have various different polynomial regression models. So we can have a model of power of 4, power of 5, power of 3, etc. So how do we know which model is the best for our data set? So we need to try out each polynomial regression model, so of different powers, and then calculate the root mean squared error for that model in order to identify which model would be the best of which power. So in today's coding exercise, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be uh, creating different models, different polynomial regression models up to the power of five. And we're going to see which one fits our model the best and which one has the lowest root mean squared error. You guys can download the completed code for this polynomial regression example from the GitHub link, which I will be linking in the description box below. So check that out. And that would actually be for a collab version of this code. So it's much more easier for you guys to use, especially if you don't have a Python ID set up yet. So then Google Colab would be much more convenient for you. First off, we're going to import a bunch of libraries like NumPy and Pandas. And we're also going to be importing PyPlot from Matplotlib because we're going to be plotting out a graph of a measure of the root mean square error for each polynomial factor. So what is the error if our polynomial power is 1? What is the error when our polynomial power is 2, 3, 4, 5, etc.? So we have imported our CSV file into a pandas data frame called df. And then we're creating a new pandas data frame, salary df, where we are only taking four columns out of the entire data set, which is total yearly compensation, years of experience, years at company, and base salary. Total yearly compensation is what we are planning on predicting, and the other three columns are our features. We're going to create a new data frame called x, which will include all of our 
features. So we want to include only the columns of our features, which is years of experience, year to set company and base salary. So we're going to put salary df dot ilock and we're going to put colon because we want to select all of the values of the of the columns from one onwards and we're also going to be creating data frames for our y test values and y training values so y underscore train is equals to salary df and we only want total yearly compensation because that is our y value right so we're going to do dot i log and also additionally we are splitting our data set for y terrain and y test and this data set has about 62,000 uh, rows so 62,000 you know values so what we're going to do is we're going to take the first 50,000 for training and the remaining of that that is going to go into testing so all the values up till the 50,000 and from the first column, so the zero column. And our Y test data frame will also be RDF dot I lock and starting from the 50,000 value all the way to the last one. And we are also going to be going to be taking from the zero column. Let's also store the number of rows that we have in a variable called rows because that's going to come in handy later on. And train is the number of training values that we are using, which is 50,000. And finally, we're going to be creating two Python dictionaries, train error and test error. These are empty right now, but as we create our different models with uh, different power factors, polynomial regression models with different power factors, what we're going to be doing is storing the error values from both the training and testing in these Python dictionaries. Next, just go ahead and copy this definition for root mean squared error. This function will essentially implement the root mean square error for us. All we have to do is call this function and pass in the y value and the y predicted values and it will return the root mean squared error. So we're going to be making use of three different for loops and I'm going to be explaining to you guys what each one is going to be doing. The first thing that we are going to be iterating through is the power of the polynomial regression. So we want to make the power of the polynomial regression from one to five. So we want essentially five different models if you think about it. All the way from the first power, from power of one, power of two, power of three, to power of five. So for i in range of one to six. The reason why I put six is because it doesn't actually use the upper range value. So it will actually, this loop would actually stop at five. Once we do that, what we're going to be doing in this part of the loop is actually creating an empty NumPy, multidimensional empty NumPy array, which will store all of our values. So all, all of our X values, essentially. The thing with this multidimensional NumPy array is if you think about it, it has to be a different size for each of the uh, different models that we're going to be making. So since we have actually three features uh, at the very beginning, we have three features, right? So years of experience, years at company and base salary. And if we're looking at a polynomial regression function of only of power one, which is essentially linear regression, if you think about it, then we only need three columns because we're not doing any power or anything. So we would only need three columns in this NumPy array. Uh, but the problem is if we are taking the next power, which is power of two of polynomial regression, we would need six columns. And if we're taking power of three, we would need nine columns, etc. So this is the part where we are going to be creating a NumPy array, which is going to fit essentially whatever uh, model that we're going, we're going to be creating. So if it's 
a power of 2, that NumPy array should be able to hold 6 columns, etc. And also, not forgetting the column for the bias as well. So if you are taking in, if you are taking into account the column for the bias for, for a polynomial regression model of factor power factor two, we would need seven columns because we have x1, x1 square, x2, x2 square, x3, x3 square, and plus also the column for the bias. So that all of these would add up to seven columns. So what we're going to do is actually create a NumPy array with all values of ones only, so np.ones, that is the method we're going to be used, using to do that. But here we have to give dimensions. So we know that regardless of the, the power of our polynomial regression, the number of rows remains the same. So we have stored the number of rows here in our rows variable. So we're going to put rows comma 3 multiplied by i plus 1. Now why did I do that? If for example i is 3, that means we are looking for a polynomial regression with a power factor of 3, then we would need 9 columns to fit all of our features plus one additional column for our bias. So that should give you 10 columns. And this is what this equation does. It's a multiple of three plus one. Next, we will create another for loop for J in range zero to three. Um, so this for loop is going to be iterating through each column. And since we only have three features, our range is going to be from zero to three. And lastly, we will need another for loop for k in range. So what this code is doing is it's taking, essentially for each of these x columns, what it's doing is it's looking at our i value. And for example, if our i value is three, that means it's a polynomial regression of factor three. So what it does is it, it iterates through that. So it takes this, it puts it into A, it takes this again, it squares it, puts it as a new column into our empty uh, NumPy array, and then takes, takes the X value again, now cubes it, and then puts it into our empty NumPy array. So in this way, from one column, we now have gotten three columns which respect, with, 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 with respective powers. So once we've done that, we need to split our x values into training and testing data sets. So this NumPy array A that we have created, it holds all of our x values. It holds all of our features. So we need to split that into training and testing data sets. So the x train array is going to be including all of the values of A, but only the first 50,000 values. So only the first 50,000 rows. And then the, the remaining uh, rows we are going to be storing it into the testing, into X test, basically. Next up, we're going to be calculating the W matrix, which is our weight matrix. So this is very important. Uh, we are using the same equation, linear algebra equation that we used in the previous video. In the previous video, I also go in depth in the math behind this equation. So if you guys are unsure, you can refer back to that video and look at the math behind it as well. So once we've done that, we'll be calculating our training error. And how we're going to do that is first declaring a array y train predict. And that what we're going to do is we're going to take our x train, so our training data set, our x training data set with our x values for training, and we're going to do a dot product with our w that we've calculated. Once we've done that, that's our y predictions, right? So then we're going to call the root mean squared error function that we have declared here in order to get the error between our y train predict and our actual training y values. And we're going to take this root mean square error and store it in our train error dictionary that we created at the top right here. And we're going to be repeating this step, exactly repeating this step for our testing data set as well. 
So what this code does is essentially for each I value, we are creating a new model. So we're calculating W, we are calculating training error and testing error for each I value. So for I all the way till I equals to five, that's what we're going to be doing. And once we've done that, let's plot all of our testing and training error, which we will be calculating over here. So we're going to be plotting that. So this uh, piece of code right here just plots all of those. So go ahead and run this. So go ahead and run this and you would get something like this. Now ignore the decimal points here, but essentially for the polynomial degree that you see here for our model. So polynomial degree of one, the orange line is a training error and blue line is a testing error. And this is the training and testing error for a polynomial degree of two. This is it for polynomial degree of three and four is here and five. So what you can, what you realize is as the polynomial degree increases, you see our testing error, uh, testing error definitely decrease slightly over time, but training error significantly increases as the degree of our polynomial function increases. You guys can play around with this code. You can increase this value right here. If you increase this value right here, we can look at higher degree of polynomials. If you decrease it, we can look at lower degrees as well. So for example, let's put in the value 11 in order to get the highest polynomial, maybe of 10, of a value of 10. And as you can see, as the polynomial degree increases, the polynomial degree of our polynomial regression function, as it increases, our training error also increases significantly. So that leads us to the question, why does our training error increase so significantly? So this question leads us to overfitting and underfitting, which we will be talking about in the next video. But as for now, this is a really great example of how you can do polynomial regression. And you guys can definitely test it, test this out on even other data sets, other numerical data sets as well. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. And I hope you guys learned a lot from this example, this polynomial regression example. There is definitely a lot of math behind it. There's a lot of matrices and linear algebra involved. And you guys can actually go in depth by looking at some of the resources that I've provided in the description box below. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next video.